Good morning, everyone. I am Dr. Hupendra Saha, Assistant Professor of Department of Internal Medicine, BP Koirala Institute of Health Sciences, Tehran, Nepal. Today, we will learn about myeloproliferative diseases. And this presentation is for the third year MBBS student. So, before going to discuss about the different myeloproliferative diseases, we have to know about the cell lineage. Like you can look at this pluripotent cells, and the pluripotent Potent cell have the two part. One is myeloid part, and the another one is the lymphoid part. The lymphoid stem cells gives arises to the lymphocytes, that is T and the B lymphocytes. Whereas from the myeloid stem cells, there arises the different granulocytes like neutrophils, monocytes. Similarly, platelet. RBC and eosinophil also arises from the myeloid series of cell. So, neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, platelet, and eosinophils are the myeloid series of cells. So. World Health Organization divided the chronic myeloproliferative neoplasm into different types. The number one is chronic myeloid leukemia, which we are going to discuss today. Second one is chronic neutrophilic leukemia. Third one is chronic eosinophilic leukemia. Fourth one is polycythemia. Then primary myelofibrosis, essential thrombocytosis mastocytosis and myeloproliferative neoplasm unclassifiable is also the chronic myeloproliferative neoplasm so it is one of the area from where the five questions are asked and let us go and discuss about the chronic myelogenous leukemia so can anyone say what we are trying to depict, depict with this picture. This red one is this red one is is trying to show the female population, okay, and the blue one is the male population, and this bar is the age group. So chronic myelogenous leukemia. The prevalence of which is increased with the age, and the peak incidence is around 50 to 60 years. Okay, so and it's more common in male. So CML is a disease of the elderly people and mostly in the males. It is highly uncommon in the younger age group, especially usually below 20 years. It is relatively uncommon conditions. So to know about the pathogenesis of CML, we have to know about the translocation. So as you can see, this is the chromosome number nine. Okay, this is chromosome number nine, and this is chromosome number twenty-two. Okay. So in a chromosome number nine, this is the P and this is the Q. This is the long arm of the chromosome nine. You can see there is a short segment called Q31 and the name of which is called the CAVL. In the chromosome nine, in the, 20, in the 22, there is a Q11.2. There's a BCR segment. So what happened? There's a reverse translocation of these segments. From the chromosome number 22, this part comes to here, okay, here. And AVL goes from chromosome 9 to chromosome number 22. So in the chromosome number 22, you can see there is, there is a fusion of the BCR and the AVL part. The BCR is originally from the chromosome, chromosome number 22 and AVL is originally from chromosome number 9. 
But this translocation does not only occur from the chromosome 9 to 22. There is also the translocation of the sum segment of chromosome nine, number 22 to chromosome 9. That's why it's called a reverse translocation. And your chromosome 9, number 9, will be a little bit longer, and chromosome 9, chromosome number 22 will be a little bit shorter. And as a whole, this chromosome number 22, which is shorter, is also called the Philadelphia chromosome. So Philadelphia chromosome is a chromosome number 22, where the fusion of the BCR and the AVL segment. Then, if there is a fusion of the BCR and AVL segment in the chromosome number 22, the, this, is the, this is the segment, these are the genes, and as you know from the genes, then it will code it, it will code the DNA segment, RNA segment, sorry, RNA segment, that the process is called the transcription, and from the RNA, it makes the protein, and the process is called the translation. Because of the product of the PCR and AVL fusion, there is an increase in activity of the tyrosine kinase, is the enzyme, like which is which it's in, which activity whose activity is increased by the fusion of the BCR and the AVL. Where there is increased activity of tyrosine kinase, the net net effect will be there is a inhibition of the apoptosis of the cells. There is the excessive proliferation of the myeloid series of the cells. Okay, so as a result of which there, will be, there is an unchecked proliferation of the myeloid series of the cells in the bone marrow and ultimately result the condition called chronic myelogenous leukemia. So what are the clinical features? The chronic clinical features of the CML is divided into three parts. One is chronic phase, accelerator phase and the blast crisis. Most of the patient present to the clinic in the chronic phase. And the prognosis of the chronic phase is better than that of the accelerated and the blast crisis phase. Okay, so what are the clinical symptoms of the CML, especially in the chronic phase CML? So in a CML, it has you, you have to memorize the clinical features of the chronic phase of CML. There, there can be a feature of the anemia because there is onset proliferation of neutrophils, platelet, and eosinophils. That's why. The erythropoiesis will be inhibited. That's why patient can have feature of anemia. And I am damn sure, sure you people know the clinical feature of the anemia. Patient can have the fatigability. Patient can have the exceptional shortness of breath. Patient can have the history of the tiredness. So these are the features of the anemia. So the so CML is one of the conditions there where there's a huge splenomegaly. So if their spleen is enlarged, then there can be a feature of the huge spleen megaly like early appetite, early satiety. You can have the dragging sensation in the left upper quadrant. You can have the pain over there. So these are the features of the spleen megaly. Similarly, some of the patient can have feature of platelet dysfunctions. In most of the patient, most of the candy, most of the time, there can be a, like platelet thrombosis. Thrombosis can occur. In a patient with CML, like patient can present with MI, patient can present with stroke, patient can present with a deep vein thrombosis. So these are the clinical picture of the CML. But if there is a health facilities available, then some most of the patients are asymptomatic. Only on routine checkup, we diagnose the patient as a CML. Okay. So if you do the lab investigation of the patient with the CML, what you're going to get? Hemoglobin. What happens to the hemoglobin? So probably hemoglobin will be low because there is a need, there is a the bone marrow is occupied by the neutrophils and the eosinophils and the platelets. So the, there is the little space for the erythropoiesis. That's why there will be the anemia. The level of the WBC will be high. It can occur up to 50,000, 60,000, 70,000. The level of basophil and eosinophil and platelet will be high. Okay, there will be more basophilia, there will be eosinophilia, and there will be more platelet. If you see the laboratory reports of the patient with CMLs. Regarding the leukocyte alkaline phosphatase, this level will be low in a patient with CML, which help us to differentiate this condition from the leukomid reaction. Serum uric acid is a marker for the cell turnovers, 
as there is an excessive numbers of the cell proliferation and the turnovers, so serum uric acid and similarly lactate dehydrogenase level will be high with, in the patient with CML. So hemoglobin will be low, WBC T will be high, petrol will be high, leukocyte alkaline phosphate will be low, uric acid and lactate dehydrogenase will be the high in the patient with CML. So most of the time we diagnose a patient with CML by doing the peripheral smears. So in the peripheral smears, the red ones are the RBCs and these like purple ones are the myeloid series of the cells and these are the relatively mature cells there. If you see the myeloid series of cells in, this, in, in the different uh, stages of the development, then we can say that there is a, a condition called CML. So this is relatively simple. There's a uh, metamyelocytes, there is promyelocytes here. So if you see the promyelocytes, metamyelocytes, and the mature hypersegmented neutrophils, then we can say uh, there is a, that uh, your, our patient is suffering from CML. If you do the bone marrow of a patient with CMLs, you can see that there is excessive amount of these myeloid series of say, especially neutrophils and these are the erythrocytes and this myeloid to erythrocyte ratio will be very, very high in a patient with CML. Similarly, we can do the genetic study. So if you do the karyotype chromosomal study, so we can, what you can see yet in the chromosome 9, there is a long segment and the chromosome 20, there is, you can see the short chromosomes. The short one is the Philadelphia chromosomes where there is a fusion of BCR and AVL segment. So this is how we can diagnose a patient with CML. Similarly, we can do the FIS study because in the FIS study, you can see the BCR and AVL fusion proteins. That FIS is the fluorescent in situ hybridization test. So why you need to do this test? We need to do the karyotyping and the FIS because all the patient of CML does not have this type of the chromosomal changes. Only around 90% of the patient have BCR and AVL fusions. So those patients who have BCR and AVL fusion, they are going to respond to the treatment. And those patients who are not having this fusion, these, they are not going to respond to the typical tyrosine kinase inhibitor therapy. That's why you need to do this test before initiation of the therapy. So what is the prognosis of this patient? So you, as you know, imitinib is the drug of choice for these conditions. Before the invention of the imitinib, the, the overall survival time is five to seven years, but after the invention of the imitinib, after the use of imitinib, the overall survival is 90% survival, even after the 10 years of the diagnosis. So now how the treatment get involved in, in, in CML? So in the 19th century, people use the arsenics and the radiotherapy, radiotherapy, you can see here, radiotherapy and arsenic here. Later in 1916, busulfine and hydroxyria was used in a patient with CML. In 1980, interferon alpha and allogenic stem cell transplantations came. And in 2001, this is with 19 years back, the imitinib therapy came. Now, currently from 2006, there is a second generation tyrosine kinase inhibitors that what we are going to discuss. So FDA, you approve PKA therapy, a tyrosine kinase, kinase therapy or imitinib therapy, popular known as Glivec, the brand name of it is Glivec. Other are nilotinib, dasatinib, and bosotinib, and ponotinib. These are the tyrosine kinase inhibitors, which have been ap like approved for this CML treatment. And this, you can see, this is the like 400 mg Glivec therapy. And you have to know what is the drug of choice for the CML especially for the Philadelphia chromosome positive CML is the imitinib. So for today's, uh, we'll, I'd like to conclude our, my presentation here. So CML is one of the chronic myeloproliferative neoplasm. The common is of which is around 50 to 60. It is male predominant conditions. And the clinical features are the features of the anemia, features of the huge splenomegaly and the Features of the platelet dysfunctions. In the lab, we can see anemia, leukocytosis, basophilia, isonophilia, thrombocytosis. There is decreased level of leukocyte alkaline phosphatase, increased level of uric acid and lactate dehydrogenase. In the bone marrow, we can see the different 
myeloid series of cell in different stages of development. In the bone marrow biopsy, we can see there is predominantly proliferation of especially of the myeloid series of the cells. And you can do the karyotyping, which is where you can see the BCR avial fusion genes. You can also do the FIS test and the drug of choice are the tyrosine kinase inhibitor. And among the tyrosine kinase inhibitor, we use imitinib mesylate mostly. Thank you. Thank you so much for your kind attention. If you have any queries, you can write in the comment section.